Hi, this is Colin Dean with Think Computers. We're going to take a look at the Western Digital MyNet N900 Central, a new wireless router that has a 2 terabyte hard drive built into it. I'm here at the admin tool. And there we go. So this is the this is the advanced settings page because I was on that earlier. Okay, here's the dashboard. And this shows you some of the some of the main features that you're going to look at whenever um, whenever you're just trying to find out quick information about the router. Um, there you can see at the top the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz networks and their passwords. You can see the device name, which is going to show up in um, your your network explorer either on Windows or on or on Mac OS or or Linux I guess too um, as well as internet status the number of devices that are connected and all of these links go to the various um, configuration utilities for these specific features um, we're gonna look at for, we're we're not gonna go into any of those yet we'll we'll, we'll look through those as we as we get to them uh, the first one we're gonna take a look at is this connect to internet. I'm not going to go through the whole thing here, but this is basically just the setup process all over again. Next is the, the setup of the wireless network. Very quick and easy for people to, to change this if they need to. You know, first time users or first time reset up type thing. Boom, right there. Setup storage. Now this is if you want to connect a, a USB hard drive or just use the built-in hard drive to, to set it up as a, a file share. Um, FTP, Samba, AFP, whatnot. We'll come back to that. Um, as well as a Wi-Fi device, uh, if you want to use WPS, is really what this is what this is for. As well as uh, it'll give you just right here a uh, quick, um, easy thing to find your network and your password. Remote access is to use uh, WD's to-go remote access feature that allows you to use a mobile app uh, on. Uh, phones, tablets, whatnot, to be able to access your device on the go, or just through the uh, to-go website, um, if you want to connect to your NAS from anywhere, um, the, the to-go system will create a, a private link to Western Digital System um, that kind of acts as a uh, sort of VPN in order to give you access to your files. Um, Advanced settings, we'll just very quickly power through these. Um, you can see standard internet status tab for uh, IP addresses and um, connection uptime, MAC address, whatnot. Um, the internet, internet setup tab, the various uh, styles of internet connectivity, PPoE for DSL, um, as well as the two uh, VPN clients there as well. Um, the router does support IPv6 out of the box, kind of cool. Um, starts out on just link local. Um, it's meant to handle IPv6 from your uh, from your ISP. It doesn't have um, any kind of six to four tunneling installed, or, or at least out of the box. Um, but hey, if your ISP offers IPv6, then you know this will be a great router for that. Um, dynamic DNS. Just about every router has these has this these days. Um, pretty pretty useful feature for being able to get back to your router. Wireless, lots of stuff. Uh, stand, but it's all pretty much standard. Uh, change the network name and security mode, password, network modes, etc. As well as changing um, why pro the uh, WPS settings. Um, this thing has a has the ability to do two guest networks, um, one on each each uh, wireless radio, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz. Um, guest access points are great for whenever you've got a party or something, and you don't want people to be using the um, the main SSID that you have set up, or perhaps you just want to create a temporary SSID for people to use so that they can't you know, war drive past your house and go look at all kinds of terrible nasty things that would get you in trouble with the law. LAN settings, be able to change the host name and the LAN IP address as well as standard DHCP settings changing and device and client tables where you can see 
um, <clears throat> the two wireless radios that I connect to, that I connected with um, with my Mac. Storage. This allows you to, to change some of the things about um, primarily the USB portion of things, although it also does show the internal there. And you know, I'm a Mac guy, so gotta have AFP on. Security settings, I don't know too many people who play around with this a whole lot. Um, of course, being able to change the firewall and turn on the DMZ when necessary, as well as <coughs> Mac filtering and parental controls. Uh, remote access brings us back to the to-go system where you can set up, um, <coughs> set up mobile access and web access from there. May take a look at that later. Um, other important things: port forwarding. Lots of entries there. I'd like to see that a little bit more scrunched down if they were to ever change that, rather than having it be just all on the screen. Application level gateway. In case you want to do um, VPN settings, uh, or really allowing VPN pass through it, I think is primary what this is meant for. This is not a pop-top server. Um, <clears throat> you can set all kinds of static routes, turn on quality of service, which I noticed some some oddities with whenever I actually had it on. Um, anytime I'd reboot the router after making a change in here, I'd have to manually power cycle the router to get it back to working. Um, I haven't noticed it in the last the last two times that I did it, but the first three or four times um, it definitely was there. So something to keep an eye on. WMM and of course Universal Plug and Play. Last little section in here is the admin admin sections. I change the password, uh, HTTPS. Um, and then, of course, enable remote management. Change time. Uh, system update. I did. I updated this earlier. Painless. Uh, however, it is timed. It takes. Uh, I think their timer was 400 seconds. Can't really do anything else during then. It will. It will cut the connection. So if you're doing it on a live upgrade, then count for about. Uh, what is that? Six between six and seven minutes of uh, downtime necessary for it. Configuration backup as well as some connection testing. It seemed to be really big on registration. I know up here in the notifications it was saying this product this product hasn't been registered um, in order to get warranty service. I guess they're kind of big on that. System log file. Changing the language as well as changing between router mode and access point mode. Um, <clears throat> that's about it. That's the, the quick overview of it. Um, the control panel isn't as, uh, as nice as I, I would like it to be. It's definitely useful, especially in the um, <clears throat> this kind of dashboard setup. Um, to me, though, the, the, the white is a little bit bright, difficult to read. Uh, it could be just my eyes and in my ambient light here in my house, but it just, it's a little bit difficult to read. Um, otherwise, pretty cool tool. Uh, easy to use for people who don't really need to ever do anything other than um, set up a wireless, because I think that's what most people need to do whenever they get a router. It's just... Uh, most end users is just set that up. But of course, for wireless enthusiasts like myself and perhaps like you watching this video, um, then you, of course, are going to spend lots more time in the advanced settings. Um, thanks for taking a look. This is Colin Dean with Think Computers.